Please do everybody. not sing. <laughs> What's that, everybody? Yeah. It's time for another episode of Thrifty Business with J&A. I'm your one host, Vegas J. And I'm Philly Gay. Hi, everybody. And I think we made it. We were having some technical difficulties yeah. on all fronts, but I think right at the top of the hour, I think we nailed it. So before we introduce our guests, let's get right into our first segment, shall we? Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week I drink a different rum out of a different mug. Now, both this mug and this rum are repeats, but they're very perfect for today. So right this moment, we have three guests who you'll see at the end of the uh, half hour. And then right at the end of the show, we're going to have a bonus five guests. So that makes... Whoops. Eight guests. Whoops. Mm -hmm. So in honor of having eight guests at once, I'm drinking some Bacardi 8 tonight. Mm -hmm. and, uh. and since it is July 4th in a couple days, I had to bust out my red, white, and blue Moai. Ah, oh, cool. Uh, this is a super duper rare mug and worth a shit ton of money. So keep your eyes peeled. And in the bottom is written where it's from. Etched in the bottom, really hard to see, but is the word the Tiki's. It was in Monterey Park, California. So sometimes you see the black Moais, they're worth about 20 bucks. But if there's one with the Tiki's etched in the bottom, it's worth about 30 bucks. So keep your eyes peeled. For mugs that look like this, any color that say the tiki's in the bottom, all right? Very cool. So there's your little lesson. All right, so our three guests we'll say hello to real quick is Bridget Brenda Williams. Hello, Bridget. <laughs> hello. Bridget Brenda. <laughs> Forever. Hello, Lorna Thompson. How are you? Hi, good. And Teresa Cox, how are you? I am here. Good. Cool. So those, uh, as you can see, we're all wearing our thrifting board shirts. We are all admins slash lifeguards in the thrifting board, my Facebook group. If you are not in my Facebook group, there is a link down below. So uh, while we are doing the show, we're going to put everyone else to sleep. So we'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. And then with Nadine and I will get the show kicked off. Let's see if we can get mm -hmm. everybody put to sleep. Oh, I think I got everyone. Okay. Oh, there it is. Cool. It works. All right. Let's get right to it, shall we? Sure. Okay. Time for today's breast cancer fact and update, uh, update and fact of the week. So my oncologist is recommending some radiation, which I need to consider. I'm kind of going back and forth on that decision. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but. Um, even if I don't, I'll have to be diligent in the future, you know, just about um, watching and kind of waiting for things to reoccur. But for now, this, the surgery was successful. I'm doing better. I'm feeling better. It's been two weeks. I still have some pain, some uh, fatigue and whatnot. I'm doing, I'm doing much better. So um, I wanted to... Sorry about that. Are you breaking things over there? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, no, I knocked something down. So um, I wanted to share this. Now, this is cupcakes. They are breast cupcakes. Um, <laughs> but this does show you the signs or symptoms of breast cancer. Now, now um, in my case, this was not, I did not have one of these signs. But uh, most people will have one of these signs. So if you have wrinkled skin, asymmetry, a one breast is larger than the other, dimpling in your breast, bruising, um, it's red and hot in any area, invisible bumps, uh, lumps, like, you know, you can't see them on the surface, but you can feel them, uh, prominent veins, nipple retraction, meaning the nipple is, is going in instead of out, um, any kind of secretion from your nipple, hardening of any part of your breast, um, pinching um, of any part of your breast or any kind of erosions or bumps. Those are all signs of potential breast cancer. So if you have any of those signs, please go and see your gynecologist, talk to them and um, get a mammogram. It, it can't hurt. It can only help. And if you're fine, you're fine. But if there is something wrong, hopefully they can catch it early and you can uh, you know, live, a, live a great life without um, having... Um, detected late breast cancer. That's not what you want. So, these are cupcakes. They are cupcakes. Yes, and they show they show uh, signs like, of these what are you like should cupcakes. Check. And I'm looking closer. <laughs> well, they are cupcakes. They what? are cupcakes. Yes. Where, <laughs> signs where's that bakery at? Breast cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but they they do help to illustrate the signs and symptoms of breast cancer. Well, you're looking good, Nay, and you're sounding Thank good, you. so keep Thank it up. Thank you. All right, let's get right into it. It is 
Time for the scores of the week. All right, mm -hmm. so I always tend to forget to show my CD scores, even though I talk a ton about selling, buying and selling CDs. So, duh, I'm going to share one tonight. I haven't shipped it yet because I just sold it today. So here it is in my hand. Is a Steve Miller Band CD called uh, Children of the Future. Now, this is a Japanese import, and sometimes Japanese imports have extra songs and stuff. This one doesn't. It's just in a Japanese import. But you can still command a top dollar for it. The domestic sells for about 8 bucks. I actually paid eight bucks for this, and I and I sold mine for thirty dollars on Amazon. So when you have a domestic import, make sure you're listing it as I mean a domestic import. Whoops! When you have a Japanese import, make sure you're listing it as such. All right, this is my fun score today. Toki Doki for La Sport Sack duffel bags sold it for eighty one dollars and eighty cents. I picked it up for six ninety nine at a thrift store. Keep your eyes peeled for La Sport Sack, and especially keep your eyes peeled for. Tokidoki for the sport sack. And this is a pirate print. The pirate print always, always does well. Cool. Now, this is an old navy shirt, one of the first tiki pieces of clothing I bought. And it's hung in my closet forever. So I was cleaning out my closet. And although it's old navy, and that's not usually a brand that Nay and I go mm -hmm. after, it still sold for 25 bucks. So someone still nice. wanted. The little tiki old navy shirt. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's a good example of where the brand doesn't matter, the design does. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you're not familiar with SpaceX, that is the rocket that keeps uh, taking off and then landing. It actually lands, owned by Elon Musk, who started PayPal, who which we all use. And anything SpaceX does very well. I paid two bucks for this hat, and I sold it for thirty one dollars. Oh, that's it. Okay. So, cool? yeah, so I don't have a lot of scores. Um, my store was on, and then it had to go off again just due to some issues that I was having. But I am planning on getting everything up and running and going strong uh, again by next week. But um, this is an example of a good pattern that I bought in a lot. Probably I probably paid cents on the dollar for it because I bought it in such a huge lot. Wedding patterns always sell, especially at this time of the year. It is wedding uh, season. Dun, da, da. <laughs> and and this is a larger size, so it did sell for $14.99, but I paid less than a dollar for it, and it was uh, free shipping. But this one actually did go international, so they paid shipping to Canada on top of that. Our friendly neighbor to the north. <laughs> and this shows you that size A cup of bras do sell just as well as double, triple D, F, G, E, whatever the larger sizes because there are shoppers in size A. And this was a Victoria's Secret bra that was almost, um, that, that was new with tags, actually. It was new with tags. And um, it sold for $28 um, plus shipping. So Nice. All right. You have seen our scores. Now it is time for... <laughs> Time for our Duds of the Week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Our Duds of the Week segment is brought to you by WorthPoint. WorthPoint is the largest resource for identifying, researching, and valuing antiques, art, and vintage collectibles. And if we had used WorthPoint, we probably wouldn't have bought these Duds. <laughs> True. Okay, so my first Dud is I had bought all of these Hallmark ornaments Around Christmas time, I sold some of them for upwards of $100. I had some really great ones, some exclusive club ornaments. Now, this was one that is a dud. Um, it, it was I have it up for $12.99 with free shipping. It made it through the Christmas season, and it's still up, and no one wants it. So um, <laughs> this is definitely one of the dud ornaments that I got. And this one is a Philadelphia Eagles mobile. Remember the, the I think that was the Exxon Tiger, actually. Yep. This is mobile. So it's got multiple keywords. S it was the SO Tiger. Yes. SO. So multiple um, keyword branding, mobile, NFL, Philadelphia Eagles. Um, but it's been in my store. It has three watchers. It's been in my store for quite a while. I mean, probably about two years. And nobody wants it. So um, I might, you know, try to reduce the price to like $14.95 plus shipping and see if it sells. If not, I'm just going to donate it. So that's another dud. All right. So this dud is so old that when I went to ship it to Canada, oddly enough, I had two rates ago. That means there's been two oh. increases and it was so cheap. And I'm like, whoa, not only did it barely sell, I lost money on the shipping. So, 
you know, I like to let my old stuff work out, but apparently this was way old and my bad. But even worse, uh, here's a little tip. When you first wake up and you haven't even rubbed your eyes or had your caffeine yet, when you mean to hit counter offer, don't hit accept. I did not want oh. to sell this Harajuku Lover's Purse for 20 bucks, but guess what? I did because instead of hitting counter, I hit accept. When I heard the cha-ching, I went, ah, oh, crap. So make sure you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed before accepting or uh, countering mm -hmm. any offers. All right, That's you've seen right. our scores, you've seen our duds. Now it's time for Close Encounters of the Thrifty Kind, Kind, Kind. Renee and I recount stories of interactions at thrift stores with fun, weird, angry, silly people. Stupid sometimes. <laughs> so this is my thrift store buddy, Ron. He's an older guy. He's also a reseller, although he's a little shy to admit that. And I see him. He's there at the same Goodwill every morning when they open. So if I'm there at the same time, I see him just about every day. He was talking, I was telling about my breast cancer, he's also a cancer survivor. But now, the cool thing is, he actually picks out items for me. So if he finds something, like he knows what I sell, what what niches I sell in, and he'll actually like hold items for me, and then when he sees me come in, he'll be like, here, I got this for you, I saved this for you, which is really cool. So um, he's uh, actually become a really cool friend, I like talking to him in the thrift store, and um, he mostly resells like um, records and CDs and household items and a lot of the, like, he doesn't sell any of the girly stuff ideas. When he finds some good yarn or whatever, he'll just be like, here you go, do you want this? And usually he finds good stuff for me, so. That's nice, you got like a little bonus yeah. thrift through there. That's I cool. do, I definitely do, yes. Okay, if you didn't watch our thrift haul this week, I thrifted one of the coolest things I've ever thrifted in my life, so I need to show you the pictures again because the story goes with it. Here's the front, here's the back. I thrifted the biggest Jansport backpack in the world. And while I was wandering around the thrift store wearing it and everyone was getting cart envy, a lady, uh, I was starting to talk to the friends I was with and I said, ooh, maybe this will be my carry on for my next flight. It is just a backpack, it's a personal. And a lady walked over and said, <laughs> I'm a flight attendant, do not bring that on the plane. If you please promise to not bring that on the plane, I'll give you some wings. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And I, I just thought it was a crazy customer. And she went back to, she was in the dressing room trying on clothes and she heard the commotion and come out. Well, two minutes later, she walked back up to me and she handed me some wings. So I guess I will never take it on a plane. So that was my little thrifty encounter with the flight attendant in the Savers in, in uh, uh, Tropicana and Eastern. So I got my wings. Yeah, I don't think that would fit in, in uh, the seat and under the seat in front of you, but <laughs> you could try. <laughs> And if you're at eBay Open, this will be making an appearance. Oh, just in case you don't realize how big it really is, there's my wife in it standing up. So, <laughs> just to give you a little more context, that's how big this sucker is. Okay, now it's time for our thrifty tip of the week brought to you by Stamps.com. Stamps.com's online postage service enables small businesses like me, Nadine, and all the rest of you Enterprises and online retailers to print U.S. Postal Service approved postage with just a computer, printer, and internet connection right from their home or office. And actually, I got to send out a package. I told you I was sending last week. I forgot to send it. So tomorrow, I'll be using stamps.com to send you a package. That's right. You did say that you had something. So my thrifty tip is if you, my Goodwill, my local Goodwill, is a disaster store. I mean, you really have to dig. It's not, it's, it's almost like the bins where, I mean, every aisle is just, a mess. Um, you can see there's a kid's shoe there in the vase and candle aisle, and there's just stuff everywhere piled up. It's crazy. But my tip is if you see, if you happen to walk into a Goodwill or another thrift store and you see that it's a disaster and a mess and you have to dig through, that's a good thing. Uh, don't be intimidated and run away. Actually, you should um, you should think, oh, there's treasures to be found here because there always are. And the more you dig, the better the better stuff you find. So if you find messy thrift stores, that is a plus. Don't run away from them. Embrace them and go dig. I, I'll say the opposite. Yeah. Oh, I love digging. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put me up here first. Uh, I did not have well, I had a different thrifty tip. I have a really good one. And then mom and I were FaceTiming as she was pulled into a garage sale. So I went garage sailing 2,000 miles away from the comfort of this chair. So when you got a friend, a family member, whatever, garage sale someplace, and maybe they need some help, or maybe you just want to go garage sailing, pop up your FaceTime 
or video messenger. So here's mom looking in a mirror, FaceTiming with me. So there's mom there. And then I have, oh, look, look, Nay, she found black diamonds. She can retire. Oh, she can retire on those. Yes. And then I helped her go through the cassettes and the CDs and we did not find any winners, but you can garage sale from anywhere in the world. You can garage sale anywhere in the world from the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. If you got a friend who's got FaceTime or, you know, you can do video chatting right through Facebook messenger. So that's true. We often do that. You and I, with, yeah. uh, so when if I you find have not something, done that, find something. do it with a friend or family member. It's quite mm -hmm. fun. All right. Now it's time for <laughs> you have got to be shipping me where Nay and I share what to do and what, what not to do in terms of shipping stuff. And this segment is brought to you by bubble fast, a family owned business providing quality shipping supplies to the online community since 1999, bubble fast, the internet's home for shipping supplies. And if you see right on your screen, Use the code J and A and save 10% off your entire order. And I'm almost out of the shitty bubble wrap. I get to use the good stuff I ordered from Bubble <laughs> Yay! Come on, somebody buy some tiki mugs. I want to get done with this crap. All right, so speaking of tiki mugs and bubble wrap, I wanted to show you this box. This box is going to Australia. And if you notice by the one standing next to it, it ain't a real tall box. But inside this box is four tiki mugs. And two things I want to share with you. Vintage mugs can be thin, but all modern mugs are thick and they're durable. So I wrapped all four modern mugs in good bubble. And then there's just a thin layer of peanuts below and above. And they're all kind of touching each other. But there's enough bubble wrap that there's cushion throughout the whole thing. And I guarantee you this will make it to Australia, no problem. But most people think they need these really big, deep boxes and yeah, if you're sending something thin and fragile, yes, have more air, more space for packing material. But if you're sending, even though they're breakable, they're hardy, you can get away. And this let me keep it under four pounds, and mm -hmm. it can go first class and not get the price jacked up when it hits priority. Yep. Nice. And my tip is, uh, this is actually a solar cover, a pool solar cover that I have. In the next picture, you can see it. Um, so it came in this box, I will ship it in this box. So if you have something, there's actually two points here. If you have something that's an odd size, a large size, and you have the original box that it came in, you can just ship it right in that box if it's not something that's too breakable. If it is, you can pat it. And the other thing is if you have something that is an odd size, plan ahead and find a box for it before you list it, actually, um, so that you're all set with it. So I'm storing this solar cover in my storage unit in the actual original box that it came in. So as soon as someone purchases it, I will, I will just have to close it up and slap a label on there and off it will go excellent tip now it's time for you. our ebay tip of the week brought to you by freeup.com freeup with three e's is the hands-on solution to hire remote e-commerce workers freeup bets hundreds of workers a week so you can get access to the top one percent of online talent whenever you need them sign up is free no monthly fees, no minimum hours. Get the workers you need when you need them and only pay for the hours they work. Hey, Brenda. Brenda likes to watch our show. She heard Nate on. Uh, see, I went off script and I blew it. <laughs> she heard Nate <laughs> the show when he was on and now on her way to building a remote empire with her team of free up workers. Go to freeup.com with threes to start to free up your time and scale your business. Yes. Now, I teased this in, uh, if you saw my little tease earlier, I teased this right here. Now, most people use these to put like collectible plates on it or cookbooks or whatever, but I use it sometimes to display things in pictures. One of the main reasons is it's clear, so it will not really uh, interrupt the flow of your picture mm -hmm. or detract from the eye. But I didn't want to uh, set a big picture of all three sets of those napkins splayed out. I wanted a little bit tighter for the opening shot. So we just put all three in this and then just move them up a little bit. So you can see that there's three here and another use for this. I use this for artwork sometimes too, uh, but uh, it, it worked for what I wanted it. And then we did this little down shot. So you can again, see mm -hmm. all three really nice, but it keeps the picture tight and square. So if you laid all three of them out and then the cups, you're now you're getting this longer picture. You can always, you always want to do things to keep it tight and square. And that's what, and, and this is always sitting next to the photo studio area. Nice. 
My tip is, and this is on mobile and on desktop, but on mobile it's really easy to find. If you go to um, your main page where it says My eBay, if you click there, you have a section that says Following. So if you click on that, there are subcategories there, and you can actually save um, searches that you've saved uh, for items, for members. Do you have that, Jason, the next? Uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, so this is members. So this is uh, not the searches, this is the members, you can see. So these are all of the members, you can see that um, I've saved their stores, and you know, these might be um, uh, people that I want to check back with for certain items or friends that you know I want to I want to check on or even um, sometimes you know if you find um, a good competitor that sells something similar to yours and you want to look at their listings and what they're selling you know you can kind of uh, check back with them as a seller so there's the members um, hey I'm on that um, list <laughs> <laughs> you are yes I'm uh, so there's the members that category, and then there's also collections. So you can save collections of certain. And you're on that list too, Jason. So you can save actually, um, you know, certain items that you've looked at, items that you're selling. Um, so it can help you as both a buyer and a seller. And also, if you participate in our um, social media thread and the thrifting board, um, collections are one of the um, ways that you can share items. So that's a great um, thing there. And then searches, you can look at your past searches. You can save searches for members, for items, for. Um, so you can actually um, look at your past searches. So if you're trying to sell something or buy something, it helps as a buyer and a seller. So definitely um, check that, check out that following tab and use it because you can save all of those items on there. Good tip. And my mom uh, said, "Hey, good tip. Where'd you buy this? Meaning this? I never, I never bothered to take the tags off. I bought it at Savers. <laughs> so there you go. There we go. All right." Now it is time for the good, the rad, and the ugly. Because if you have not learned this yet, you will learn it now. Ugly always sells. Find the ugliest thing in the thrift store. That's what's going to bring you good money. Go ahead, Nay. Okay. So mine is, and I think this is ugly. Now this is, this is a dress. Now it fits me more like a tank top because it's a size extra small women. But if you can see the, do you see the, the pattern on it? Yeah, it's like tribal masks. Yeah, and then the back has like random the same thing. And it's kind of got that crinkly material. So I think this goes in the category of ugly. Now, the brand is why I bought this and the price because it was half off. Um, it is an extra small. So like I said, it fits me like a tank top, but it would fit a normal extra small woman like um, a mini dress. So do you see the brand there? Hey, Jams World. Very cool. Yeah, so it's a very cool brand, and it does say mask on the tag. It's an extra small, but I think that pretty much um, quantifies this brand always sells. I did purchase it for Goodwill or ha or eight ninety nine, but this was half off, so I figured I'd give it a whirl. So that's my so, ugly item. Now people are saying that's cute. Now don't forget, that's why we do this segment. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's very, very true. And so what I'm about to show you, I know some people think yes. it's ugly, but, but I liked it, and it's staying here in the house because it fits Stacy. But Nate and I don't compare before really the show, even though I said mm -hmm. it up. I, too, have dress. <laughs> and I picked this up for Stacy yesterday, uh, last mm -hmm. week. And uh, it's, it's a homemade dealy. So I could still sell uh, it. it. It's pretty bitching. Uh, but, but it fits Stacy. Oh, nice, so it, it's staying here. That's cute. Yeah. Wait a minute. That reminds me. There's a dress that you have that I want. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have to talk about that after the show. Yeah, we will. All right, cool. Let's get to our last segment. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Jay and Nate's Mini Thrift Halls, where we tease our next haul show. Now, neither one of us had time to thrift. Uh, I, I did it just a little bit, so we will not have a haul show this week, but I have two things to tease. This is one, and Nadine loves this. And if you don't know what this, oh, yeah. if you don't know what this is on the next haul show, I'll explain what that is. And this is pretty badass. I'm just going to hold it up here for a minute. Oh, my gosh, yes. Oh, my. Somebody's blowing me up. 
All right, so that's my teases. Okay, so my tease, my first, first tease, and I'm going to show this really quick. And it has something personal to do with me that I like, but I purchased it for two reasons, for the brand and the subject matter. So I will talk about that. And then I have these pajama pants. They're a size large. They're Disney. And they're Star Wars. So I'll talk about why I purchased them as well. Cool. All right. This is going to be a rare shocker. We already have our guest for next week, so we're going to promote it right mm -hmm. now. That never happens. Not only do we have yeah. the guest, we've got the artwork. Yes, I uh, did it quickly today. This is going to be a kick-ass guest next week for a couple of reasons. This is my friend, my friend, Fed. Fed used to work for the eBay Main Street team, and she was in charge of bringing uh, sellers to Capitol Hill to talk to the congressmen and senators. So she brought me to D.C. twice. Fed has now moved over, and she is the uh, manager of seller communications for eBay, and she's in charge, I think in charge, or has something important to do with the Shine Awards, which are coming up at eBay Open. So next week, we're going to have an actual live eBay employee who's been in two radically different departments through her career, and we're going to talk eBay Open, and we're going to talk uh, uh, sellers being on Capitol Hill, and we're going to talk the eBay Shine Awards. So uh federica is uh we've been friends a long long time now and she was so excited she said, i'll be more than happy to come on jay so that is next week normal Very time cool. thursday 9 p.m on the east coast 6 p.m on the west coast all yes. right cool all right let me uh get i guess get one thing quickly set up here and then we can get our guests in here and we'll be off and running with a heck ton of fun here with everybody all the thrifting uh or not all, but half of the thrifting board lifeguards all in one place. Do I have it all set properly? Yes, I do. Yes. Cool. Let's get everybody in here. All right. Fingers crossed. All the technology lets me get them all back in. Mm -hmm. All right. So far, so good. Except, to, oh, I think we're all back. All right. Cool. Ding dong, who's here? A lot of guests. We got Teresa. I see Teresa. I see Lorna. I see Bridget. Hello, everybody. How you guys Yay. doing? Hello. Hey, hey girls. So uh, mo most everybody knows you guys, but let's start with uh, Bridget and just kind of introduce yourself, who you are, why you are, blah, 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 where you are kind of thing. <laughs> okay. I am Bridget Williams, and I joined Jason years ago back in that other group, and have just kind of become, we've become friends um, in addition to co-lifeguards, or me lifeguarding for his group, and I'm in Kentucky, and this will be my second uh, year attending eBay Open. Cool. Kentucky, yee-haw! Mm -hmm. right. let's, let's go shooting across the country up to the far left upper corner. Hello, Lorna. Hi. So I'm Lorna. I'm one of the lifeguards as well. Joined Jason's other group. Uh, became a lifeguard shortly after I joined. And I'm happy where I am now in the thrifting board. And I'm in Washington. It's beautiful today. And it also is going to be my second year at eBay Open. And I'm driving. What? You're crazy. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. I'm not driving. You know I don't drive. Yeah, that's why I'm like, Lorna doesn't drive. So the first time Lorna drive. drives is going to be a thousand miles. What? The <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend's driving. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. And then we're going to pop down right next door to me, just a little bit to the east. What's happening, Teresa? Teresa? Uh-oh. 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 I can see her smile, but... <laughs> Oh, no. What happened to Teresa? All right, so hang on a minute okay. here. Hmm. Well, maybe if uh, Teresa is listening, she can pop out and come back in. All right, hang on. I turned her mic off, turn back on. All right, Teresa, do me a favor, refresh, and when you come back in, you should be okay. So we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk to Bridget here. So, Bridget, what is your uh specialties i mean we all have a lot of them but of course everyone knows mine is definitely tiki's and music so so what is your specialties right. that you like to find to sell and to teach about uh disney and shoes disney and shoes now do the, do those cross lines a lot is there disney shoes 
Occasionally, yes. I do have some fit flops that I bought at Disney that are Mickey heads. So yeah. nice. Hey, hey, Nay, is uh, does Bridget sound crazy to you too? She sounds a little, um, a little, a little, um, yeah, body, but robotic. Okay, Bridget, yeah. you unplug your headset and let's see what you sound like. Is that better? Nope. Not really, but we can still understand you. So that's that's. I'm a good gonna, thing. I'm a, uh, all right. Hey, Teresa, are you there? No, I don't see her. <laughs> oh. She's really oh, good. Oh, hey, that's what happens when you want to have 72 guests on. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> so can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, we see you too. That's a, okay. that's a bonus. Okay, good. good. All, All right, right. So give us your, your bio. So uh, my bio is I just moved from northern Arizona back down to Phoenix suburb of Gilbert, and it's hotter than Hades here today. Um, I uh, went to 12 and became a lifeguard shortly thereafter and have been here ever since. And how is, uh, how, so how is, how is Gilbert today? Gilbert's hotter than hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not so bad here. It's not so bad here. What we got I think today? it's a, I think it got it was 110 today. Uh 105. Uh, 105. It only got to All right. yeah, so. well, it's actually in Philly, so that's that's an unusual thing. I'm almost uh I'm up with you guys. <laughs> it was yeah. 98 right, so what, here what? in Kentucky. Oh, you sound much better. What happened? Mm. I don't know. That's so crazy. Okay. It's kind of garbly. I do yeah, have to right. say that was a loaded question, though. Does Bridget sound crazy to you? Yeah. You have no idea how often <laughs> I hear that. All right, so let's let me see who I loaded up first. Uh... Oh, these are Lorna's. Okay, Lorna, you're up first. So what we're gonna do oh. is, uh, like Nay and I do our scores of the week. So mm -hmm. everyone here is gonna do their scores and give you a little bit of tidbits about them. And then in about 17 minutes, we're going to have five bonus guests. We'll see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> but Lorna, you're up first. So you got this uh, you lo little yoga tank top here. All right. So this one is a piranha top. And it is a size small. And we always say bigger is better. But the size small on this, it sold within a couple of hours. And I only paid 99 cents for it. So right. it was a 99 cent tag. And size small work does they do sell. So especially mm -hmm. especially in Piranha, it's another big um, player with Lululemon and yeah. Athleta. Yeah. So. Okay, so being a dude and a dude who doesn't do yoga, I ain't never heard of Piranha. So I should be putting this on my bono list. Is that what you're yeah, telling me? Yeah, it's one of those athletica brands. Yes. Yes. You want you want to be looking out for this. All right. Yeah. And was it at a bin store, or where'd you find it, Lorna? At a regular Goodwill, just on the rack, and I didn't find it in the athletic wear. So one of oh, the oh, where'd you where'd you find it? One of the tips that I would like to share with you is I actually found it in the junior section nice. with, all the tank, with all the tank tops. So you got to make sure you go through all the tank tops in the mm -hmm. junior section. They put a lot of those tops in those racks, and they don't know what they are. So absolutely look in the junior section. Good tip. That is an awesome tip. Now, I won't be in the junior section. That's a good tip. <laughs> That's a great I tip. Yeah. I like, dare you to go in there. Oh, you dare me, huh? Yes. Do it. All right, what what so about these, these uh, books here? Yeah, these next ones are demi books. These are really good books to look out for. And one of the things that I like to say is look for size and sets. So these were set together. They're larger books. And I knew... I was just gonna, I didn't even look them up, but I knew they were good. And they're all like religious books. So there's like one on Mary, one on Jesus, um, and they were autographed inside. So- By Mary and Jesus? Jesus? By Mary I, and Jesus? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, would, I wouldn't think they would be Mary, autographed by <laughs> Jesus and Mary, but- <laughs> But- Hey, hey, really hey Seuss autographed it. <laughs> Yes, they actually sell for about twenty five dollars a piece, but I didn't want to wait. I'm sorry. It's all right. All right, giggles. So 
They actually sell between $25 and $30 a piece, but I didn't want to wait that long, so I just threw them up together. So like look it. for size. And that's something and so I've never heard of before either. I would, I, mm -hmm. I know nothing about demi books, so very cool. You threw them up inside a prayer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kentucky robot is back. You damn Kentuckians. <laughs> oh, no. She said a prayer, and Jesus responded. All right, well, since you're back to robotic, <laughs> you're up, uh, Bridget Brenda. Oh, am I? Okay. I don't see my items up there yet. I can't even remember what I sent you. <laughs> if you click on the screen down below oh, with, with the window, you're going to make it. it big I it. see it. I see it. Um, right now is a really good time to mm. sell sandals. And I've been selling them as soon as I can list them, as fast as I list them. Echo is a really good brand. It's also one that you want to do the, the twist test on. And I have a shoe here to demonstrate. And I know yeah. I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. This is a Clark's. And you always you pull at the heel. Mm -hmm. Do the twist test. Bend it. If Bridget, anything, Bridget, Bridget, mm -hmm. hold it up right. a little bit higher because you're holding it down in the little window. We're, well, we're I'm, really, I'm really short. Yeah, well, hold it up just a little bit higher. There. There you go. Now do it. Now do it. Now okay. Do it. There we go. All right. Do the twist test. Bend it. If anything comes apart, falls out of it, get rid of it. Do the pull at the heel, the whole nine yards. Basically, just put it through the the, the trenches and see what happens. Um, so let's see. We've, we've sold books on Jesus. Now we got samples. <laughs> is, is the crown of thorn coming next? What's going on here tonight? I didn't know, I didn't know we were theming the night out here. What is happening? <laughs> Um, what are my other shoes? Yeah, I've never heard I, of this brand. Nout, Nout. Nout, yeah. That's another, it's another one. It's another high-end shoe. And I've been getting best offers on them um, and kind of taking almost, almost anything I can get at this point just to get them out of here. Those are um, yeah, the Nout um, Mary Janes, which is usually a fall shoe, uh, but they went somewhere here in the in the states they didn't go internationally i do sell a lot of shoes internationally um but i'm really focusing right now on sandals and cleaning up my boots i have tons and tons of boots to clean up and get ready for um fall so if you all can see my my shoe hoard right now it's it's kind of out of control how about obviously the mine too. Uh, the the chat knows this brand they're like, oh, they're from yeah. Israel. They're the most comfortable. I just scored some today. Mm -hmm. So apparently yeah. I've been missing the boat and I need to pay attention to this brand. Yes. Yeah. So that's why you have all of us yeah. to teach that new things, Jason. Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Sorry. This is Teresa's. Okay. So this is an, actually, I think, is this the one I sent you, Jason, that I said that I th actually thrifted in Vegas? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. So, um, I, so, so we're doing this thrifting class, and I thrifted this jacket in Vegas, and I love jackets and coats. This is an Anne Klein. Um, if it was my size, I would have kept it. It's a nice, bright pink color. I learned that not to take bright colors on black background because the black absorbs the light. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do this jacket justice. Um, but, yeah, so I, you know, I, I paid $4.99 for this jacket and sold it for 50 bucks. and I love jackets because I like selling things for 50 to 100 plus dollars so nice. that's that one so actually i bought that more go ahead go ahead t i i bought this one more for um the color and the style than the name and ancline will still do okay but i liked the three quarter inch sleeves and like i said i just if this was my size i probably would have kept it Hey, Nay, I want you to answer a question in the chat from David Ewing. David's a great participant in the thrifting board. He wants to know what a Mary Jane is. And, and I'm sure <laughs> well, we're not talking drugs right now. That's, where's Bridget? Nadine, are, Nadine, are you there? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, technology tonight. Internets. Bridget, how do you sound? Uh, I don't know. How do I sound? Hey, much better. Tell us what hey, a Mary okay. Jane is, please. Much better. Mary Jane is a shoe, like the second one there, with the strap that goes across the, the top. Does that make sense? So this is a good example. Let me pop it back up on the big screen. This is a good example of a Mary Jane. But show the top of the shoe. Oh, well, hang on. Yeah. 
There that you one? Go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So it doesn't have to be that up. brand. That's just a style it, of shoe. That is a style of shoe. That's right. And it, yeah, it doesn't have to be that brand. And Nay, if you can hear me, you have been froze for a while. So hop out and hop back in and we'll keep on trucking. Refresh. Refresh. So, usually, uh, T, before we go to your, whoops. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Bridget. Those straps are usually um, adjustable. Sometimes they're elasticized, but they're usually adjustable to account for um, different shoe sizes, different okay. shoe height, or foot, different foot sizes and different foot heights. So if your foot's chubby or skinny. Yeah, basically. Got it. Yeah. You got a little right. swelling so going Teresa, on there. James. You said something here that do you aim for a specific threshold of dollar amounts that you're going to list items for? I do. And, and what? I do, yeah. And, and and how has it changed over the years? Because mine has too. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, I especially since after moving the second time, um, I chucked all kinds of stuff. If I couldn't make mm -hmm. fifty bucks on it and I didn't love it, I didn't care. It went to the donation pile. Um, so, and that's why I like jackets so much, is because it's easy to spend ten dollars or less on a jacket and make fifty to a hundred bucks. So. Basically, I mean, I do sell some jackets for 40, but most of them are 50 to 100 plus. So uh, I think it's got to be you, Teresa. Is there a TV on somewhere? No. It's not me. Not me. I'm in my office. Because I hear it, and so is the audience, but where's it coming from? Ooh. <laughs> This is yep, so. I don't know. Weird. Maybe. This is so weird. I hear it. I everyone hears it. That's so. I hear weird. it too. Crazy. Weird. Drown it out. Weird. Don't sing. <laughs> is your is your mom watching TV somewhere? T. Like three rooms over. Okay, but it's not that loud. I can't hear it. That's what we're hearing. Bridget's in her Let basement. Hold, hold on. Yeah, that's what we're hearing. I mean, my, but my mom's in her. I'm like in one end of the house, and she's in the total other end of the we're, house. We're in hearing her room. it. Look, Laura, we Laura, hear Laura, it. Yeah, look, it ain't Lorna. There ain't no TV at the beauty parlor, and and Bridges in her basement. Yeah, TV's mom. Not on here. Wait. You know <laughs> what? We could we could hear Nay's boy Nay's boys earlier, and they were like three stories away. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, modern technology. Yeah, you know, I used to sell I used to sell three dollar CDs because I would buy a whole collections and bust them out. And then one day I'm packing up like 14 three dollar CDs that I've made like a buck seven profit on each. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I exactly. saying that? like it takes just as much work to sell a twenty dollar CD as it does a three dollar CD? And I just cut those mm -hmm. out. So even when I yeah. still buy whole collections, I take all the three dollars one three dollar ones and I just trade them into the big record stores. That's right, a good go. tip. Let's go to your next score. Okay, so this is an Eddie Bauer jacket, and again, seventy-five dollars. Um, I probably, I think I paid ten. I think this was listed at ten dollars, and I got it for fifty percent off. And um, Eddie Bauer is a good brand. Um, they sell well. Uh, extra large was a plus. This is, you know, something in men's that I would look for all the time, and dollars to make seventy-five any day of the week. And that's a pretty plain looking jacket. And 75 bucks, hell yeah. Boring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this and it's not red. This one was, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this one was actually um, my sister's jacket. And uh, my sister passed away five years ago. And some I'm still listing her stuff. Uh, but this was something that she had. And it was not in perfect condition by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and but I did clean it up a little bit. I was able to get some things done. So seventy five dollars for something that they were just going to um, goodwill. Seventy five dollars. It says two sold on there. That's because somebody bought it, returned it, and then I relisted it again. That's the only reason that's there. And, and I think when I mm, I don't know that I increased. Normally when I get a return, I increase the price by ten dollars. But I don't think I did on this one. So my next question to all three of you, and we'll go down the line. We'll start with Bridget. When you walk into a thrift store, do you, and this is for all of you, do you go to where your specialties are first and then the rest, or do you have a pattern and you just get to your specialty at one point? 
I go straight to shoes and I just start tossing them. Today I found a gorgeous pair of real authentic coach shoes for $4. I just start tossing them in the cart. And are you like supermarket sweeping them into the cart? Just like, I need all these. Um, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> I've only had a few, fight a few little old ladies off. You know, I just elbow up and take the shoes. Cause you, cause you know, <laughs> if you've never met someone, you know, people seem larger than life when they're on your computer or TV or movies. Tom Cruise and Arnold Schwarzenegger seem tall and, and uh, Sylvester Stallone, they're all very short. So I'm here to tell you, Bridge is really short. <laughs> I'm not that <laughs> short. I might oh, yeah? be. I'm, I'm probably your shortest lifeguard. I will give you that. Yes. I'm I'll really behind you. Yeah. Lorna has me by about a half inch. Yeah. So, I'm so, yeah, just so you, short you definitely person. have some elbows. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We're, we make, you can rest on us, Jason, at open. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Both, both arms, like one on each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, what about you, Lorna? Do you, do you go right to it or do you just kind of work your way around the store in a pattern? Uh, you know what's funny? I every time is different when I go in. I it, I look and see what the specials are first. Like if it's not a Goodwill, but it's like a thrift store that has uh, fifty percent off linens or fifty percent off shoes or whatever. I go those sections first, and then for Goodwill, I have my own little my my own little map, and I and I start with the books because at my Goodwill, that's just where the books are right when you walk in. And then I go to men's because I just kind of work my way around the store. But definitely, if it's a different type of store other than Goodwill, I always look at the deals first. And you, Teresa? I tend to do a men's section. I don't really thrift women's clothes. I hate dealing with women's clothes. I hate women's sizes. So I usually go to the men's section, usually jeans, and then I'll hit the jackets. But jeans and jackets are my favorites. And then I'll just and, and wander I, around the store. And and I have a pattern. Every store is the same way to me. So it doesn't matter where CDs are or where the sections that could have tiki mugs are. I go in a pattern. And it's weird. When I, when I go with friends that just scatter like cockroaches, I'm like, no. You work your way through the tchotchkes, then across whatever the back wall is, and then work your way through clothes. And I have this pattern that I think it's crazy that people don't follow my pattern. <laughs> Like when I go with Vicky, she pretty much follows the same pattern I do. We work at different paces, but we go the same route. And I'm like, see, that's normal. The rest of you are all screwy. <laughs> well, I kind of have ADD, so I kind of just zigzag all over the freaking store. <laughs> really? So you don't even like go, do you grocery shop that way also? Well, unfortunately, yes, because I usually forget my list. Again, ADD. Oh so, my god. <laughs> yeah. It's how I get my steps in, damn it. <laughs> That's right. So, so let me ask you this. Have you ever gone to a thrift store where your niche was so plentiful you just didn't go back to the rest of anything else and you just left? Yeah. That would be today. Really? I really. I mean, yeah, I did really well with the shoes. I was kind of pressed for time, but I did really, really well with shoes. I spent like I don't know, 50 bucks just on See, pretty much on shoes. Shoes aren't good for me here for some reason. We have the tiniest section. Like it's seriously just one shelf. That's it for men's and women's. That's all I have. I never really. Oh, God, so, I die. I'm so jealous of your shoe hauls. Oh, my God. I <laughs> die. I would die. And, and I stopped at Ross and I go ahead, Teresa. Stopped yeah. at Ro I stopped at Ross today and I, my mom was in the car and I'm like, let me just go in and see if they have any mandals. And I went in there and she's like, well, go see if they have them. If they do, you can come back. Bye. No, I, I walked out with 40 pairs of shoes. Oh, <laughs> it happens. I stopped shoes at Ross happen. Today. My mom was in the car and I'm like, let me just go in and see if they have any mandals. And I went in there and she's like, well, go see if they have them. If they do, you can come back. Bye. No, I, I walked out with 40 pairs of shoes. Uh, it happens. I shoes it happen. Off. And Laura, have you done that where you bought so much of one thing you're just like, I'm out of here? Yeah. And I went in there and yeah. she's like, well, we'll see if they have them. If they do, you can come back. No, I, will, I walked out with 40 pairs of shoes. Okay. One of the new guests who just joined us, you have to mute the feed. And Laura, have you done that where you bought so much of one thing you're just like, hey, okay. Mom, yeah, I'm I guessing it's you, Mom. Have them if they do, you can come back. No, I won't. I walked out with 40 pairs of shoes. Hey, you and my mother. Jeez. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, of course, if it was I my hear mom. my story one more time. <laughs> my gosh. You, you know, if only my mom of... did a weekly YouTube show. Oh, wait, she does. Come on, Ma, you're killing me. <laughs> I'm going to dream of Teresa's voice tonight. And and unfortunately, Nadine's I heard computer that story. is saying, screw you. So, it's too dark. All right, now we've lost my mother. Oh, my gosh, what's happening? So let me finish up, and I'll say I've done it twice. I walked in, and for whatever reason, I went to the bra section first, which is not my norm, and I found one artist bra. Artist is a brand, A-R-D-Y-S-S. They make crazy sizes. I found two, and then 10, and then 15. And when I was done, I had 82 bras, so I just said, screw it, and I left. I bought 82 bras, and I walked out. And I've done that one other time. I found uh, uh, 80... They were triple branded uh, Hawaiian shirts, Shaggy oh, wow. Artists, and Hard Rock Casino. They had just cleaned out their store, and they were four dollars oh, each. And I grabbed all eighty, and I left. That was it. Oh my word! That's insane. All right, so we have our bonus guest in here. Mom, have you muted everything now? Ah, uh, yes, I have. Okay, thank you, mommy. <laughs> Oh, I see all my pretty friends down there. And oddly enough, the only person we don't have is our co-host. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Jason and his harem. Yes, let me introduce <laughs> our new guest. We're going to start with Debbie. Hello, Debbie. Hi. Debbie Weeder has been a, a good a friend of mine for a long, long time. And Debbie's really good at books. And our next surprise guest is my mom, Peggy. Hi, mom. Hi, son. Sorry about that. <laughs> if only you did a weekly YouTube show, mom. Well, I do, but remember, I'm old, so you have to go with that. All right. Mom's using the old excuse. We'll let her use That's it. That's right. And then with the ravishing pink hair, we have our good friend, Vicki. Hello, Vicki. Hey. Vicki is Vicky. a whole mile and a half from me. And then, and oh, oh, backing up. So, mom's specialty is anything big and ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, what is your specialty? Um, pretty much anything I can get my hands on and sell. I don't really specialize yeah. in anything. I specialize in everything. All right, then we have our good friend Robin. Hello, Robin. How are you? Hi, you everybody. Need, you need can to speak. speak, Robin. This is not. I know. Pictures. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> The one time I don't talk. <laughs> I'm going to turn you up. Robin's awesome. got some mic issues. So Robin, one of Robin's specialties is men's sports coats. Yep. And, yep. and last but not least, we have Heather. Hi, Heather. Hey, everybody. Oh, I see you yes. in, in your husband's studio. I love yes. it. It's all fancy in here. Oh, I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to so geek out. I love your husband's studio. <laughs> <laughs> And Heather, if you don't, if you've not seen the episode with Heather, her specialty is Disney. Yep. <laughs> so the reason I have all these lovely people here, and Nadine, if she if her computer ever co cooperates, is for one reason and one reason only. A, they're smart and they know what they're doing. <laughs> B, they've all been guests on the show. But C, <laughs> if you're coming to eBay Open, ladies and gentlemen, this is all your, what I'm calling, tour guides for the Las Vegas Thrift Class on Steroids. So this Woo. is the Woo. most, <laughs> this is the most adventuresome class I've ever decided to throw. We'll see how it goes. But there is going to be 10, count them, 10 tour guides in the thrift store with you with a variety of specialties. So there's going to be nowhere you can rock. be. <laughs> there's you, nowhere you can be in this thrift store without a expert standing next to you. So what we're doing is two hours classroom time. We're going to have 50 chairs set up, projector, and the five original parts of this show. So me, Nadine, Bridget, Lorna, and Teresa are going to be doing a, a, uh, a, a keynote or a PowerPoint presentation on a lot of specialty, how to list them and all that stuff. Then... We're going to go to the bins. Yes, we're going to go to the bins and teach you about the bins. What? Then, oh wait, there's more. <laughs> then we're off into the biggest thrift store in the country with 10 tour guides to help you through the thrift store. There is only six slots left for all this awesomeness out here. 
what am I hearing? It was somebody. Ty- oh, mom, that was you typing. Mom, stop typing. No, it was not noise. me. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to have this store full of experts from every nook and cranny, and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun and a hell of a lot of learning. So if you're coming to eBay Open, even if you're not, if you want to come to this class, if you live in Vegas, right down below is the link to sign up for the class. Are you okay? Who am I hearing now? I hear a man. I hear a man talking. Which one of you's got a man in the room? I think it's Bill. I think it's Bill. It is. I'm sorry. I just got a phone call from my dad. Will you tell Bill to shut up? We're doing a show. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I'm sorry, but it it could have been an emergency. That's why I threw the phone. Yes, I love Bill. Bill had to be on the show, too. We're going to now show you bolos from each of these experts who just sold stuff. So let's start with Robin. Woo! Let's always nice. start with Robin. Robin is a good flavor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Robin, tell us about your bolo. <laughs> oh, I, well, I was waiting for the picture. Okay, so it's the it's Orvis, right. but it's not really the brand name that's important. It's the Harris Twee that's important there. So I think I had it listed for like eighty nine ninety nine. Yes. But I didn't get 89. I think I got 69. It took uh, best offer, and they paid the shipping. So uh, it's 100% wool, and it's a highly coveted jacket because of the Harris tweed. Um, it's a fairly small. It's a 42R, so I think that's, I think Jim can wear it now that he's an extra large. I don't think Jason can because he's, yeah, he's 6'5", so that's just not going to work. But, um yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, you can see the photos. They're pretty. It's an old listing, which is funny. I didn't even put the store on sale. It's an old listing, so the photos are not squared. So everybody who's listening, please, wear your photos. Wear your photos. All right, so Nadine's um, ready to come back, so I'm going to pause you there for a second. Lorna, can you do me a favor? I, I forgot I, to have the window up of the bolos. That's a tenth. I, I can, only, can only have ten. Lorna, can you hop out, and then we'll have you hop back in at the end? Yes. Thank you, Lorna. All right, Nadine, come on back. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's, and, and that's good that you said that about the small sizes because, yeah, 42R is not a big dude, but, you know, even though we always right. say bigger is better, there are still small people out there. My, right. my brother-in-law right. is one of them. He's tiny. And to be honest with you, I've actually sold more small uh, jackets, uh, blazers, sports jackets, then I do my large. Um, I think it's because, uh, just like Vicky's taught me, you put your hands down the rack and you can actually feel the fabric. Um, I guess you could call it copper feel. And uh, you can actually tell. <laughs> the Robin's tip is to copper feel. Right. In the men's department, it does. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard here tonight, copper feel in the men's department. <laughs> I don't think I taught you that, Robin. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> Are you so, going to yeah. demonstrate how to do that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Totally. Totally. <laughs> All right, let's 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 welcome back the co-host of the show, Nadine. Hello, Nadine. Yeah, how are sorry you? about that. I had some uh, technical difficulties. I'm downstairs. And my All right, well, Nadine's back. We had to have Lauren hop out for a minute, but we're going to go through the bolos of our guests. So Robin just talked about her sports coat. And next up. We have, oh, my mom is selling some vintage uh, reclining furniture for out by the pool. Yeah, uh, Dad and I hit the, the jackpot, you might say, because we came across uh, two uh, garage sales in one day selling the vintage uh, uh, aluminum web chairs. And um, they were 50 cents a piece. You know, everybody always says, oh, God, how do you find these prices? But, you know, I just stumble on them, you guys. Wait, what? So at, at 50, 50 cents? cents? Why are you selling them? Fifty cents. Because they're ding dongs. I know. I, I mean, I, as soon as I saw them, I, I knew. And I, I know a lot of you guys out there shy away from large items to ship. But as many of you know, if you watch Jason and my YouTube show, my dad and I do a lot of large packaging when uh, on shipping. And uh, if you tune into us this Saturday night, Jason, uh, I've got video showing dad packaging things up. So I, I sold both of these chairs to the same guy. So for a dollar investment, I turned that into $80. And wow. um, 
Yeah, and, and, and I just sold uh, the two chairs that I have and a single chair. So all of them that I bought, I've got one left, which is a child's chair. And this is our finished product of those two chaise lounges being ready to uh, be shipped out. Uh, what Dad did was put a piece of cardboard in between. Oh, oh, oh. Save that oh. for our show on Saturday. Oh, Don't be giving okay. Don't oh. you understand the art of the tease? <laughs> That's a tease. Okay, tune in and we'll tune we'll in on Saturday to see we'll all that. more about how those chairs got shipped because we have video yep. too. So yep, yep, mom yep, and do. dad are not afraid of any size of anything. No, we we we, we do the craziest things. On <laughs> we do. We do. I mean, you know, I've got a lot of large items here, and and uh, I've got a lot of other, other big items to show on the show. And we will be doing our show Saturday night, Jason. If you want to mention that, honey. Yeah, Saturday night. I don't have the exact time yet, but tune in. It's going to be big, big daddy's shipping tips this week. Yep. So. <laughs> So yeah, don't be afraid, guys. They're, they're out there, and if you've come across the, uh, those aluminum web chairs, grab them if you got the right price. Okay, now we have something that, if I just looked at the picture, I would say, what the hell is this? Wow. It must be Vicky. That would be you, Vicky. Oh, okay. Don't want that. Okay, so my tip is, um, as somebody asked, what you know, what do we specialize in? And I kind of said that I will sell anything I can make a buck on. So don't be afraid of something that you are not a professional about. This is just one of six or seven knitting machines that I've sold in the past three months. Uh, this one sold just the other day for $315. It was on sale. Wow. That's my customer. My customer paid uh, shipping, which was about $50. Um, I purchased seven or eight full knitting machines like this with all of the accessories all thrown in a big old jumbled box at a garage sale. Um, and I had sold some here and there before, but I know nothing about them. The price said, how much for the whole table? The guy's like hundred bucks. I said, I'll give you 70. He took 70. I have since turned this into over $2,500 in, in sales. It took me about three wow. hours of research, nice. picking everything That's apart. Girl and putting everything together that belonged with each other. But all I did was Google, Google is my friend. So Google is always your friend. It'll teach you everything you need to know. And what you're gonna do is learn something new about a whole new category that you may never have known about before. So don't be afraid to invest a little bit of money to make a lot of money. Um, right. I've sold knitting machines in the past that are complete. They're pretty easy to look up. But when these were all in a jumbled mess, the cases weren't even together, the accessories weren't together. I looked them up by the model number. I broke it down by what goes with each machine. Illustrations online. I mean, it couldn't have gotten any easier. I let them go. So seventy dollars. I turned into twenty five hundred dollars. The only reason I picked this is because this just sold this week, and this was the last one. And it took me about ninety days to sell everything. Um, and these I took a photograph of. And yes, they're on my floor. I'm sorry, it's a knitting machine. There's really no other way to take a photograph of this and get it squared away because it is <laughs> it's super long. They're very long, they're very heavy, they're very complicated, a lot of different machines, um, a lot of different moving parts and things like that. And, and because it's a manual knitting machine, there's also not much that can break on it. So for you to say, oh, everything looks complete, tested, not really, I don't know how the hell to test this thing. They don't care because anything that's wrong with it can be replaced, little pieces are easy to replace, and anybody that knows how to use it knows what they're looking at. I know we have somebody on the thrifting board that specializes in selling these, um, Besides I can't you. remember who the, yeah, I can't remember who the person with the girl's <laughs> name is, but she, she does specialize in selling these. And I have asked questions of her before in the past, um, not with this, this set, but in any case, it was, uh, you know, it was a pretty easy sale. And, and like I said, I shop the perimeter of the store, kind of like Jason does, whether it's a thrift store or whether it's a garage sale, I'm going to go for the weirdest thing because if I think something's interesting, if I think something, it looks vintage, if I think it looks complicated, um, I'm going to buy it. And I'm going to sell it. And in selling it, I'm going to teach myself something new. And I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone and learn something new. So let me tell you now, when I find a brother knitting machine, I'm on it. Because I know what they're going to sell for now. <laughs> so i am now got a whole new niche that I didn't know about before. <laughs> hey, Vic, hey, Vic, remind me next week the uh, Thrifty Encounter is going to be me and you at the thrift store last week. I don't remember what yeah, happened. That sounds, that sounds you good. found something. I found <laughs> something. Oh yeah, and you. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, All right. Shit. You All showed right. me something. I showed you something. It was not that kind of encounter, Bridget. I hear you back there. <laughs> All right, let's go to a uh, Heather here. Let Let's talk about Disney because Heather is a Disney nerd through and through. Definitely. Hey, be nice. 
I've, I've said <laughs> that long ago. That's a Disney nerds. I'm a tiki nerd through and through and through. Okay. All right, then that makes better sense. So I apparently didn't get the message that it was supposed to be something that I sold, but that doesn't matter. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's cool. No, this is fine. All right. So, you know, everyone knows Mickey, Minnie, Donald. They know Disneyland, Disney World, all the different places. But I don't know if, if many know about Disney's timeshare. Um, it's called Disney Vacation Club, or DVC for short. There's a, over 200,000 members. members. Um, it started about 25 years ago. And when they sell their stuff, it's exclusive. You have to be a member to buy it. So what I found was a Monopoly game. It was put out in 2012. And you had to be a member to, to purchase that. And it sold for, what, $130? Yeah. Um, so, and the DVC is going to be probably what you're going to what you're going to see um, as far as the logo. Um, but yeah, just a whole different section of Disney that you may not have heard before. Very cool. And yeah, cool. you know, some of those Monopoly branded co-branded games do well, mm -hmm. and others do shitty. And this obviously is the one that does well. 130 bucks, hell to the yeah. Yeah, the um, the Disney theme park ones do well. Do well. Sorry. <laughs> The uh, theme park ones do well, also. Very cool. And last but not least, Debbie is going to tell us about a book. Yay! Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, I have also not found this book, but I know someone that's found two of them. And so keep your eyes open for The Margin of Safety. There is another book similar by a different author, and that's not the one you want. So you want this particular book. And you can see it sells for a lot of money. Um, so there's so many books out there, so much money in books. I have reached, not to get this book, but I've reached into a box before and pulled out a book that I sold for $120. People at garage sales do not value books. They will shove them in boxes. It's kind of the last thing they think about. So keep your eyes open. The eBay app has a scanner bar in it now, so you can actually scan some items when you do searches on the, with the eBay app. And more and more items are starting to come up now because, remember, we're putting in the ISBNs now and the UPC codes, and that's helping the catalog. I also use Profit Bandit, a scanner app which ties into Amazon, but I, it still gives me an idea of what this book could be worth. And children's books, oh my gosh, I love to find sets of children's paperback books, like the Animorphs, um, any kind of paperback books where you can find a bunch of them together. Value Tales is another amazing set of books. The Jacques Cousteau could be worth $300, just that value tale book alone. So always be looking at books, just like Lorna. Lorna shows us too, you know, there's some amazing books out there. A lot of people think everybody has iPads now and they don't care about books anymore, but that's not true. Collectors especially love books and the dust jackets can be worth more than the book itself. So you gotta be careful about dust jackets too. When you see a value of a book, you know, you want to make sure, is there a dust jacket that goes with it? Um, and then another tip, too, when you list your books, open up the dust jacket. Look at the actual board of the book because there might be mold or smash bugs or all kinds of garbage under there. So you always want to take the dust jacket off and really look at the book from all the different angles. And in case no one's really paying attention to their screen, this book sold for $775. So if you're not reading your screen and you're not looking in the book section, there is some, you know, like the holy grails of tiki mugs or the holy grails of books, apparently this is one of them. And there is some people out there, somehow they're making fake copies what? of the book. Yes. I don't know how they're, you know, so I don't know what they're producing doing. producing books? Oh my God. That's not, that's oh, not normal. Yeah. You can make CDs and DVDs easily. Binding a book is not. Well, they don't actually build. bind it. I think they might be putting it on like a, um, a, a CD, like a CD-ROM or something. But so, so you may come across this listing and think, well, that's only worth, you know, it's not worth it. But when you find the actual book, and it's amazing to me because in this day and age, 2017, that book I think might have been written maybe in 1999. What they were teaching and investing back then, you would think it wouldn't be relevant today. But you can see that book still holds value. There's another book I was going to use as my bola, but because I have found two of them, it's called Disco Bloodbath. But the price seems to have come down a little bit. I've found two of them. 
for 50 cents each, you know, one at a garage sale. Again, I was walking away down the driveway thinking there's nothing here. And I looked in a box and there I pulled out a disco bud black disco blood bath and sold it for 70 or 99 dollars it has a wow. big red high heel on the front of it wow. it's a true story based on a bar a situation in new york where there was a fire um so yeah there's a lot of money in books and another tip i like to tell people too is a lot of times paperbacks when you scan the barcode on the back sometimes it may not be the right book it won't line up and it might not be worth much open the book up the paperback book on the inside there's another barcode scan that one that usually will be the accurate one so sometimes when you're scanning books and things it comes up with a really funky title even on Amazon sometimes it'll come up with an item that's not even a book because the part the barcodes are all goofed up so check so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the level of expertise and eBay smarts that I have put together for the most kick-ass thrifting class I have, the most ambitious one I've ever done. I thought about it, and, you know, I, I started here, and then I kept thinking about it and building and building it, and the 10 of us, well, Lorna had a bow. Thank you, Lorna. Sorry, I had a bow for a second. But the 10 of us, nine down here in Lorna, are bringing it all together to teach the most kick-ass thrifting class you have ever seen in your life. We're gonna have some fun kick-ass shirts, easy to spot us in the thrift store. So as you, after you've got your two hours of classroom time and about 15 minutes in the bins, you're gonna have two hours in the thrift store with us just wandering about and helping you in all the sections that we're good in. We all have our specialties, but we're all good at many, many sections. So you don't all need to be in the same section. You can be anywhere and you'll see us and you know, this was born, <laughs> this all started from many years ago when I went thrifting during an eBay event in Vegas with five friends. And at first I didn't want to do it because I'm like, I ain't taking nobody to my thrift store. And I did, and what started to happen was I taught about Hawaiian shirts and my friend taught about uh, silverware and this friend taught about car parts. And I'm like, hey, this is kind of cool. So now I'm like, all right, everyone's coming to town for this big eBay event. I'm gonna put the kick ass most awesome crew of teachers together I can possibly imagine. And it's going to be one of the <laughs> badass classes I've ever taught. So if you want to sign up or come to Vegas, there's only six slots left. Can I say something? Who's, who's I want, I wanted to, Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Yeah, go Debbie. I just wanted to say, I know that all of us are committed to helping you earn back every penny that you pay for this class, plus, plus a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. We wanna see you succeed. We wanna help you guys every which way we can succeed. And we're so excited that everybody's coming to Vegas. All right, and we're oh. gonna end, and yeah, we're, we're gonna have, by the way, there's a lot of parties too. So this is just a yeah, class, we're having yeah, a yeah. shit ton of parties. <laughs> All right, Nadine's gonna oh, finish this. Party. Nadine's okay. gonna finish this since we lost her for about half yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, I know. Um, so my, I have a double tip here. First of all, with women's clothing, always look for Lily Pulitzer. I'm sure you all know that about Lily. These yeah. are some newer Lily shorts. Now I'm gonna teach you how to measure shorts, um, pants, skirts, uh, all of all of these have uh, the same. You you need to include measurements. You need to measure with a soft measuring tape such as this. Um, now this measuring tape is a stamps.com measuring tape. So ah, look at that. <laughs> so a little plug for our sponsors. Um, but this um, for the waist, you want to measure. It's 17 inches across, so it would be a 34 inch waist, and you want to measure the um, the length from the top of the waist to the crotch area, the seam of the crotch. And in this case, that is... Um, hold, hold it up, now. You're, you're holding yeah, it too low. That's eight inches. So right to the crotch seam, that's eight inches. So that would be the rise. That's called the rise, the top of the waist to the crotch. And then the actual um, inseam, which on a pair of pants would be a lot longer, um, or... A, um, it, this is from the crotch seam to the end of the seam, uh, the bottom seam. This is only three inches on a pair of shorts, but on a pair of pants, it could be like 30 inches, 32 inches. So that's a crotch to the bottom seam. You have to include these measurements. And then for women like me who are very hippie, um, I have wide hips, always have, was 
probably born with them. Um, I <laughs> I need to have that measurement, or I can't. Oh, I need to break in here. We're down to five slots left. Oh, awesome. So I cannot wear a pair of shorts. I don't really wear shorts, but I can't wear shorts, pants, skirt, any bottom pieces without that hip measurement. So what you're going to do is take it about four inches below the waist, and you're going to measure across, which um, in this case, this is 18 inches across. And then you're going to double it. So that's 36 inches of hip. So you're going you're gonna to put your hip measurement there for 36 inches. Um, so those are the measurements that you need to include with any um, bottom garment of women's clothing, whether it be shorts, a skirt, or pants. Bottom garments. I love that. Yes. All right. We're, we're going we're gonna to end on that tip right there. And for those of you who want to sign up or if you got any questions, you, you know where to find me on Facebook. It is super duper easy. But if you don't know, just no go up to any address bar and type m.me slash Tiki Pug. They'll take you right to my messages on Facebook. You can drop me a message. We only got five slots left. It will wow. sell out. You do not want to miss this kick-ass <laughs> gallery of instructors. <laughs> you know, it's, one of those, it's one of those perfect storms because you can't take this on the road. We all have families and, and, and wives and husbands and kids and dogs and cats, but we're all going to be in Vegas together for eBay Open, so do not miss this. Gonna, you only got five slots left, so get to it. Now, Secret Beach members, we are switching over. And now you can ask any of the 10 of us. Lorna, we'll be back. You can ask any of the 10 of us any questions you want, and we'll be the experts here will be happy to answer. So, Secret Beach, we'll see you guys in two minutes. Everyone else, thank you very much. Tune in next week. We're going to talk to Federica Ribiolo about eBay, eBay uh, Shine Awards, eBay Main Street. Mm -hmm. And then Mom and I will be on on Saturday talking about Big Daddy shipping tips. So everyone Ooh. who tuned in tonight, everyone who's down here as our guest, thank you all very much. We love you very much. And we'll, we'll see you at Secret Beach in two minutes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.